Here I go again with my chat. Going down the alternate path, mostly. Mostly gonna go down the alternate path. I guess there's a poly on here. Let's give it a try. <clears throat> Gemini. Aquemini. See you later. Uh, speed plus luck and an eddy room. This is a dream come true. I can't find your gear in Knockout City. More details on that will be forthcoming in the in the intervening few days that lead us to next week. I uh, I appreciate the enthusiasm. Rest assured, you will have the opportunity to get our gear in in Knockout City. If you're if you got the cojones to rep it, hey! Don't not don't fly to me, Walt. I'm not gonna say it. I'm not gonna say it. <laughs> what are your thoughts on the Canadian prog rock band Rush? Uh, um, I would describe myself as a big fan of Rush, one step short of Die Hard, but certainly a, a big fan. I would say they are probably. I'm not super, super duper into prog, but I would say that. Uh, Prague is at least Pog, and Rush probably my second favorite Prague bands. I mean, it's real, dude. Yes has some unbelievable slappers. It's really hard to compete with Yes, but it's a situation where it's really hard. To, you know, you, you you got nothing. There's no complaints about being number two there. Let's put it that way. But um. Rush, like, number two in the best way possible. I mean, Moving Pictures, one of the all-time, you know, great albums of the 1980s, at least, and The Camera Eye, an unbelievable song. Like, Red Barchetta is just a great rock song to begin with. G you know, great story, great sense of uh, freneticness to it. But then The Camera Eye is, like, it's a prog rock masterpiece, man. It's, it's a w beautiful song. And also, one of the only songs that I think has the lyrics Elo Govna in it. <laughs> Which makes it noteworthy to begin with. They do be saying Elo Govna in the song. Just, honestly, just get away from me, okay? Speed up. We respect it. We respect the speed upgrade. Remember, we gotta go alt path. But we're gonna suck that up. Thanks for the luck. The luck's getting out of control. Um, we we couldn't have gotten the key to begin with, so I'm not sweating it. We'll just go down to the next floor. Hello, governor. Drop a fry. Drop a fry, will ya? Drop a fry, baby. Yeah. Yeah, do I make you drop a fry, baby? Yeah. Could you drop, drop ship a fry on Shopify, baby, Randy? Yeah. Minus three billion. Okay, that's fair. I mean, we're just getting started. The banter is just... Is, is the banter engines are warming up. By the way! Which one of you scumbags made me buy Key Lime uh, LaCroix at the, at the grocery store? Someone said, I hope he buys some Key Lime LaCroix. Did you see that? It's my favorite flavor. Um... I, first off, I don't know what the hell a key lime even is. Is that a lime from the keys? Is it like a regional thing like Parmesan cheese or is it an actual species? Like Natasha Henstridge? Or genus? I do, bro, I don't know. What do I have? A four year degree in biology? It's a cultivar? What the hell does that mean, man? It's a cultivar? I don't understand. They didn't teach us all this. They, they only taught us how to use centrifuges and micro pipettes. Anyway, it's not bad. I mean, any sparkling water, you know, I'm, I'm a fan either way. It's certainly better than the, the free um, Perrier that we got in our uh, in our Hello Fresh. Hello, Governor Fresh. <gasps> no, not, not after all this, not after all this. But, um, either way, uh, it's just, I mean, it's not that good. It's not that good. I would describe it as decent, but not that good. What a room, man. What a room. 
Whatever, we'll just get the 30% chance. How does that sound? It doesn't matter. We have to hold R if we can't get a key anyway. Um, I thought I had something else. Oh, okay, there's our key. I thought I had something else to say as well, but I've, I've since forgotten it. Better than normal lime or lemon? Yeah, I probably. It kind of tastes like a lime version of limoncello, which, again, limoncello found itself in the tap water tier, I believe. I was laughing. There was... It was either one or two people, not many, because there was like 7,000 watching. But every time during the LaCroix live taste test, the landmark moment where you'll remember where you were, uh, you'll tell your grandkids about watching it live. Um, I, uh, I would always, I, I would take a sip, and if it was fabulous, I would tell you. I would say, this is fabulous. Um, by the way, what does the item on the left do? But somebody in chat kept typing, of course it's fabulous, it's literally just sugar. And I was like, you don't know what you're talking about, man. Ah! You can pay for devil deals, that's right. In, in our current situation, not worth it. In general, possibly worth it. In our current situation, not worth it. What's with the Bart Simpson post? What's what's your problem? I guess is my question. It's just Bart Simpson, dude. Don't have a cow, man. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Eat my shorts. I don't get the joke. There's no joke, dude. It's just Bart Simpson. You know what? It, it's like modern art. Like whatever you interpret from it, that's the value of it. I scrolled past it in the break room today, and it made me snort. See? That's what I'm going for right there. That's that's more along the lines of what I'm going for. I don't believe you. There's no joke. We're, we're leaving, by the way, because we have to. There's, there's genuinely no joke. The joke is just like, you know, what if you farted? A key! Well, well, well. Now we can go to our item room. A joke, sire? The uh, Okay, so I guess maybe there was like a secondary aspect to the joke. And the secondary aspect to the joke was just like... In my head, I was like, this is what the internet used to be like in like 1997. You would just Google like Bart Simpson. And then it w a picture of Bart Simpson would show up and you just like... It would be like frames or no frames, and you'd be like, I don't know, I guess the patrician's choice was to use frames. And then you would be like, I remember that, Bart Simpson. Look at that, man. Those were the days. So I thought, you know, wouldn't it be funny if I just posted a photo of Bart's, or a picture, I guess not a photo, of Bart Simpson? I was like, that's funny. It's funny to me, at least. Last known photograph? I mean, it got 1,400 likes, so clearly, like, something's working. I, I'm stunned. I'm, I'm offended. I'm, I'm upset. That's the longest I've ever seen a, a troll bomb wait to explode. You, no, no, no. Not like this. Thanks for the penny. Bart Simpson is a plus two. There we go. Vote with your with your wallet. You know what? This was all an elaborate ploy to just gain access to the boss trap room. You guys are gonna be so sorry. Are you freaking sorry? <laughs> ah, ah, delightful. Okay, hold on. We can't. We can't. We can't. We can't. Hold on. This is an important moment for, for society. This is a gimme. You, you absolutely take this. Then we look at that other room with a fresh set of eyeballs. No, the, like, I, you guys are working off antiquated info. The D100 is actually kind of doo-doo now. It's kind of garbage. Yeah, it's kind of DD mega doo-doo. I actually, like, I, I resent two things about Repentance. And only two things, but definitely two things. 
One is they made rerolls worse, even though I was the only moron doing them on the regular. And then the second thing is I honestly do not like the change about the boss trap room. Um, I, I think you should still be able to enter the boss trap room even if you don't have one absolute HP. But like instead you have, uh, you know, like one red heart and then 11 spirit hearts. I guess like they did make the the pool better, so maybe maybe there's some maybe there you know one hand washes the other. I don't really know what that means, but so I'm just uh, I, I I stand by that. Though it wasn't good, I think it was our best option. If it if it's always items, then I I take back my words and my deeds. Well, not my deeds, but my words at least. Will you play uh, Abyss again? Absolutely. I thought it was, I had a very fun time with Phantom Abyss. I would return to it for sure. Schedule is a little uh, tight for some time. Maybe, you know, before it launches really soon. Maybe before launch, maybe, maybe at launch. We'll take a look. But I had a, I had a great time. Some great clips too. It was definitely like watching back some of those clips. I was like, I should have been crushed. <laughs> I should have been destroyed. <laughs> but I wasn't. Instead, I lived and I was one of the top uh, 100 players probably by, by volume at least, by mass. Okay, that's fine. I didn't want to deal anyway. Um, we do need a bomb, so there's a real temptation to just honestly get this. But let's wait a moment. We, if we waste some charges, we waste some charges. We need a bomb. In order to... Well, you know what? If we just get one key, we can get two bombs. We need to be able to go into this opposite path here, though. Briefly. Hey, NL. Fart Pog. So like this is just oh I forgot we could just fly and get him easy easy, um, so there was like maybe a bit on stream like three weeks ago, where I was like talking about Twitter and someone was like if I tweet you fart pog, will you click the like button on it and I said absolutely not, and then there's one guy and I'm I'm wondering if you're here right now I think uh, I think your name is Jeff, his name's Jeff. Um, maybe once every four days for the last, uh, three weeks, he's been tweeting me fart pog. Uh, and, and I know what his deal is, is he's like, at some point you're gonna forget that you said you wouldn't like this. But the more you tweet me, the less likely I am to forget. So I just see it every, I like, I want to free you from this prison that you've put yourself in, essentially. Uh, I'm not gonna click the like button on it. Just, like, be be free, okay? Just be free from... I'm not annoyed, really. I'm just, I'm more like, you know... I, I don't want you to harbor this delusion that... That you're you're one day away from, from me clicking the like button on it. I just, I'm, I'm worried about you. Your family's worried about you. You just created a bunch of other people who will do it. De Jeff has a free pass. Everybody else, you're welcome to join 2,000 other people on the mute pile. The weather's fine. You're also welcome to like Jeff's uh, fart pog tweets. By all means. I can't stop you. What's with the Johnny Fallon tweet? Okay, so first off, I want to be clear. It is Johnny Fallon. It is not Jimmy Fallon. There has been some misconception. Um, but there was an... I, I woke up today, one of the first tweets I saw was the most absolutely unhinged tweet I've ever seen in my life. The tweet went something like this. Settle a bet for me. Uh, so settle a debate between me and my wife. 
I am a great sleeper, and I very much enjoy the feeling of going back to sleep after waking up. This this will give us HP, and then we can suck up the box on the next floor. Um, my wife is an insomniac and doesn't sleep well anyway. Now here's where the bet comes in. So what I do is between 2 and 5 a.m., I set an alarm once an hour. And then between 5... That's fine. And 6 a.m., I set an alarm every 15 minutes until I have to wake up at 6. Who's in the wrong here? And literally 100% of people were like, you. For sure. Are you insane? You set seven alarms over the course of four hours to go off every single day? You're obviously in the wrong. People were like linking him to like the UN uh, standards of, of what constitutes torture. Like if you have prisoners of war, you can't do this to them. And he was doing it to his wife. Or at least he wanted to. Um... And everybody's like, it's a bit. This no. If you if you read the replies, there, there's only two possible situations. Okay, one is it's a bit, and he uh, is just one of those guys who is like, I got him <laughs> by making myself seem so stupid. Everybody got mad at me. Wow, look at you. Must feel really silly right now. And everyone's like, Nah, we just think you're kind of weird. The other one is that he's sincere, and I feel like that's way more likely. Um, much like the, the shower, uh, like napping in the shower bit. What a shot, man. Uh, there were people in my mentions that were like, I do this as well. Is it really that weird? I'm here to tell you, yes, the yes, it is. But the other thing is, if you're not like, you know, torturing your spouse or like your roommate or whatever, then nobody cares. Like actually nobody cares at all. Do whatever you want to do. It's only... The fact that this guy had the audacity to say settle a debate is actually hilarious. Like, th there's no debate, sir. You're the only person in the world who, who agrees with yourself on this one. I was still surprised, though, by the number of people who were like, I do this myself. Like, one person in, on Twitter was like, if I didn't set an alarm... I mean, I feel like we got we got two different situations going on here as well, it's worth noting. If you don't think you're gonna wake up, so you set like two alarms or four alarms over the course of half an hour or something, of course, that's normal. The only thing abnormal is you thinking that that's not normal, at least normal-ish. Four hours before you have to wake up, starting an alarm once an hour, that's not normal. That's like... That's some American Psycho stuff. Go ahead. Like, maybe the reason that you're not, like, feeling that good when you wake up in that situation... ...is because you've basically, like, you've micro-dosed sleep all night. It's crazy, man. It, it's... it's psychotic. Anyway, at the end of it, he was like, yeah, I don't really do this because my wife would get mad at me. But sometimes, like, I'll do it in the spare room or whatever. And I'm like, dude, I just can't imagine, like, going to bed. Like, I don't know how you decide. You're like, oh, some nights when I go to bed, it's, uh... Oh, sorry, honey, can't come to bed tonight. I'm gonna go sleep in the spare room and wake up every 15 minutes like a freaking nutcase. <laughs> Well, your life's not complicated enough as is. I'll tell you something. I feel like I could use some damage on this one. That's me in the corner. Farting on the wall. Trying to fart on you. Angel room, baby. We don't need Mega Satan. Forget that. <sighs> I'll go to bat, man. I don't think this is that bad. Except for all those times it is. I like this, though. 
And then we'll suck up the... Uh, we'll suck up the angel deal. Fart Pog. Woohoo! 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 Yeah, it is... It is... It, it, I mean, it's just a fundamentally disrespectful post to his wife, which is like the real sad part of it, but... Um, the way that, like, he says, like, oh, she's an insomniac anyway, so it's not like she was getting any sleep to begin with. You're like, well, you don't say. You ever think, like, <laughs> maybe the fact that her husband has, like, such an aberrant sleep schedule that he has to get up seven times a night just for the feeling of falling back asleep might have something to do with exacerbating the issue? No? Alright, well, that's fair enough, then. Mm -hmm. Secret room? We, we could have placed that better. I, whatever, it worked. Secret room? Really? Really? I guess. Regular secret room? It was unexpected. And now the Davinci guys got the vaccine? Very happy for him. Um, I, uh, I'm getting mine tomorrow. I'm stoked. It's kind of it's it's a little inspiring, man. I was looking at like the the vaccine tracker for Canada, and something like 19 million doses have been dished out here, and I'm like, you know. For the first time in like eight years, I'm like, wow, it really feels like 87% of us are in this together. It's a nice feeling. <laughs> How many people live in Canada? Like 30, 36 or 37 million, I would think. Something like that. 35, 38, 36, 37 million? Okay, there you go, yeah. He's got the Midas touch because he touched it too much. Dude, I saw it on the news today. It was like, in, in the world, Toronto and Vancouver have become like some of the most unaffordable cities. Tell me something I don't know. Then it was like... Third, uh, is Hamilton, Ontario? Hamilton is the third most unaffordable city in North America? What happened? I don't mean to disrespect Hamilton, but are people aware that this city has an odor? Like, you, you know, if you fell asleep driving on the 401, and you woke up and sniffed, you would not need to read a sign to know that you're going by Hamilton. You would be like, oh, we must be passing Hamilton. Let's give it a try, man. It just, it's like Cornwall, like it has an aroma. I'm, I'm not insulting it necessarily, I'm sure it's industry that's leading to the aroma. I'm just like, Oh, Tinted Rock in the item room. Thank you, thank you. We need all the HP we can get on this floor. I mean, Hamilton, I get it, you know. It's, it's a big-ish Ontario city. It has a CFL team. That's not a joke. You could take it in a humorous way. It has a, it has a CFL team. It also... Um, it has a major university... Like, it's, it's got amenities. I'm just surprised that it was like Toronto, Vancouver, Hamilton, San Jose, New York, Los Angeles, San Francisco. <laughs> Admittedly, the reason that the cities are more unaffordable than the American ones is not because they're more expensive. It's because they're almost as expensive, but salaries are a lot lower up here, but still. Anyway. No offense if you're living in Hamilton, but I'm like, man. I mean, the city, I'm like, I guess I'm saying offense. 
The city stinks, you still gotta deal with the Ontario winters, and it, now it's crazy expensive too? What's going on? <laughs> yeah, sorry that you're offended. You think it's because of the play? People are like, ooh, I want to live there. I live outside Hamilton. We'll be waiting in the MLS.ca for you. Placenta's pretty good, but what if we just sucked it up instead? We'll be waiting in the stink for you. There you go. I like these have such a high tendency to be bad, man, but like what if it's great? Wait, this is good! Don't screw up my entire alt path, please, but this is fine. Although it's gonna be like a long fight. Like it's gonna be a mighty long fight. It's gonna kinda suck. This is a soft lock? No, don't we just walk out after this? I thought you just walk out, man. Like, this doesn't actually send you down a floor. It just makes you fight uh, a boss, and then you get some, some freaking free stuff. You're just stuck? That's really cool. This is a really well thought out addition to the to the card pool. It's only a soft lock on the mom floor. Uh, no problem. It should be easy to patch then. Uh, teleport me out of here. Teleport me out of here, please. Teleport me out of here. Wow. I mean, that is, uh... That's a kick in the teeth. So let's try rebooting, see if maybe it works. Welcome to the club, happened to me too. I will become my money back. Yeah, yeah, we're stuck, all right. Um, that's fine. New new run. Easy come, easy go. We got exactly 29 minutes. <laughs> um, we could try to fight Ubermom. Who's a strong character? You know, what about Tainted Keeper Ubermom? Tainted Keeper Ubermom. Just a plain plate of noodles with a little bit of Keeper. I'm not even putting a, a slash marker in there because I feel like, you know, that's that's an insult to the YouTube audience. I'm not, like, super mad. It's the first time I think I've really gotten a, a serious bug in Repentance, but... I mean, especially when you consider, like, all the moving parts in the game, it makes... True ending, true ending. It makes a lot of sense that, like, you know, it, it's hard to, like, test for all that stuff, but... You already beat Ubermom? Yeah, um, true ending, true ending. You know what I mean. What's your favorite Talking Heads song? Dude, great question. Been listening to a lot lately. Best album? Remain in Light, no question. Um, there's a lot of good choices, don't get me wrong. Best song? I gotta be honest, man. Like, it's a single, so you lose some street cred. But Once in a Lifetime is a really good song. That's like an all-timer. Feel, excuse me, I need this money. Um, this Must Be The Place is also good. Don't get, I mean, it's beyond good. Don't get me wrong. Just as long as you don't say like Bridge To Nowhere or Road To Nowhere. Please, I would like to buy Monstro's Lung. I mean, this is two of diamonds, so I'm not sweating it. 
Now I may become the Joker. Like, it's so... If you run out of ideas for cards, it's fine. You don't need to put that many in the game. Like, if they would break the game. Or alternatively, like, you just pick them up and you go, ha ha, ha ha, ha ha, ha. You, you just don't have to put them in. You don't have to... You don't have to put them in, is all I'm trying to say. Um, just trying to... I know there's a tinted rock, but what, what if... Hold on, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to get in a secret room here. Wait, we already blew... <sighs> so I'm going to try. Whatever. Whatever, I'm out of here. See you later. Uh, go to... You have made a shit of peace. I will become my money back. Who said no better, Darth Vader or Caesar? Probably one of the easiest questions um, I've ever been asked in my streaming career. Caesar. Darth Vader's no is comical. I'm just gonna go ahead and say it, by the way. I, Cause I, I'm like always, I, I guess I'm a Star Wars contrarian. When Revenge of the Sith came out, it was not insanely well liked. People dunked on it for stuff like the the no and yeah, I mean it, it is really bad. But I the movie is pretty good and I have maintained that throughout my I'll take a luck upgrade. I've maintained that from the first time that I saw it until now. Revenge of the Sith I always have had like a pretty decent affinity for. Um but I was the one I get crapped on, like, at all times, is essentially the way that this works. I saw episode three, I was like, it's the best of the prequels by far, I had a pretty good time. Uh, and people were like, you have no taste, it's horrible. And now I'm like, I, I think it's pretty good. People are like, you're a fool, it's a masterpiece. Like, you, you can't win for losing with the Star Wars community, man. What is this golden pill? But the, the no is really bad. Like, it, it's... It's stunning that it made it into the final cut. Because it's... it's Anybody except George Lucas, I guess, could have looked at it and been like, this sounds horrible. But I guess, like, when you're that close to the... To the... To the skin for George Lucas, he was like... I don't know, I just imagine him being like, you can really sense the anguish. <laughs> Did bring us a, a great series of YTMNDs, no question there. You think in 15 years people will love the new sequels? Um, no. And I, I genu- I, I, did, I didn't see uh, Rise of the Skywalker. But... Like, I saw... Uh... And we, it, I don't want to argue about it, okay? I saw The Force Awakens, I thought it was pretty good. Obviously, is it art? No. It's kind of like the same movie as, uh, A New Hope. <laughs> then I saw The Last Jedi, and I was like, I like this, they're trying something new. Um... And then I saw the trailer for Rise of the Skywalker, and it was like, oh, never mind. Uh, I guess I was wrong about that. Um, but I think, like, as much as I think the prequels are kind of weirdly overrated um, now, and I, I genuinely think both Episode 1 and Episode 2 are horrible, and Episode 3 is pretty good, um, at least the prequels have, like, coherent and consistent traits between them, and they, they feel like one man's vision of what Star Wars could be. Whereas the sequel trilogy really just feels like they... Maybe they had a vision with the first one, but it, it kind of feels like they were just like, Star Wars always comes in threes, so we're gonna make three new Star Warses, and like, we're gonna change them, you know, ad hoc as things go along in accordance with the reaction that audiences have. And I think it led to kind of like three movies that nobody really loves. Whereas at least with the prequels, you know, I, I don't love them. 
But I know that there's people out there that are like, these movies for me are like, you know, I, I find them... They, they tickle me in the right spot or whatever. Whereas the sequel trilogy... I, I hate this item. <laughs> to me, at least, the sequel trilogy really feels like... Kind of cynical. It's like they, they endeavored to make, like... The most middle of the road and as a result the least pleasing Star Wars property they've ever made. Maybe not the worst, because like, I can't stress it enough, Episode 1 and Episode 2 are really bad, in my opinion at least. Like, I know Episode 2, and we, we talk about this all the time, so I apologize. Episode 2 gets more flack, because people are like, Episode 1 at least has some fun scenes. But I'm like, I think Episode 2 is way better than 1, but still horrible. Rocket Bombs is too spicy for me, man. I, I can't I can't make it. That being said, like they're doing great stuff, you know, with the Mandalorian right now. I think the Mandalorian season two especially was you know more or less what most people want from the franchise. Rogue One was pretty good. I thought Rogue One was pretty good. You're not going to see me do this too much, but Ma the Void is, is helpful. Sarmondia, thanks for the gifted subs. I guess I'm, I must have had the, the Patrician Star Wars take. I'm, I'm farming a lot, of, a lot of tryptophan in chat right now. Wait, that's what makes you fall asleep. What makes you feel like you did a good job? Or you're comforted? I'm farming a lot of oxytocin in chat right now. Don't normally get this many people being like, hey, you got it exactly right. I'll take it. <laughs> normally people... Dude, oh god, I just realized I can't go down this road. Let's lose all the oxytocin I just got. Um, you ever see a show called Extreme Cheapskates? I've been watching some viral clips of this show, Extreme Cheapskates from TLC. And... Uh, it's, uh, one of the scariest shows I think I've ever seen in my entire life. When there are underprivileged people that are on extreme cheapskates, and they're doing what they have to do to survive, it's a show that's, like, it makes you sad to watch. And you're like, you know, this takes place in the richest country in the world. Uh, and people are, like, dumpster diving for pills, and they made a show about it, like, to glorify it. And I'm like, that's a scary thought. But the thing that will freaking send you up the wall, really think I won't send you up against the wall, is, um, when they have ostensibly rich people on the show who just are annoying, <laughs> I guess. Is what it <laughs> like, I, I was talking about it during Mario Party yesterday, but there's, like, this... I'm mad. Um, this, uh... Uh, family was on the show, and the, the mom was like, let me show you how I, like, uh... minimize my food budget for the month. And once a week, she goes around to her neighbor's houses, and uh, just begs them for food. And I I get that people are like, well, if they're going to waste the food anyway, hey, they could like always say no, blah, blah, blah. But like if your neighbor comes and they got like two kids or something like that, your neighbor comes to your house with a laundry basket and is like, hey, do you guys have any spare food? Just to maintain like the status quo, you might give her like a like a jar of peanut butter or something. Maybe once you found out what her property value was, you might be like, you know, no. But you you also don't want to contribute to like not being able to talk to your neighbors, right? Like, is it like I was? There was another one where like this lady went in a, a hardware store and she didn't want to pay for paint, so she was like, "Hey, do you have any samples?" And the guy was like, "Yeah, here's our samples." And then she said, "How much are they?" And he said $2.99, and she said, how about free 99 And then he said, are you serious? And she said, yeah. 
And it, then he said, well, I suppose if you're going to come back and buy some paint here, we could work something out. And she said, all right, but I'm not going to come back today or the next day. And eventually, he was just like, just take the samples. And she was, like, gloating in the parking lot. She was like, I always got taught to, like, haggle for a great deal. And I'm like, lady, you got this sense of superiority. The guy just felt sorry for you, and you were probably, like, annoying the crap out of him. And he said, I'll get rid of these samples just to get this lady out of my store. Like, you just... It's not... It's nothing to be proud of. You basically just kind of like emotionally manipulated a small business to be like, here's some free stuff for you. Yeah, yeah, Parasite, yeah, 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 Parasite, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now you're talking. Anyway, I'm just saying, like, it, this show, like, blows my mind. There was another, I was like, at least this guy's only harming himself. Um, but he like, and he's got a good job. They made that very clear over the course of the show, at least. He's just like obsessed with saving money. Um, but he like, when he showers, he plugs the drain. That's fine. Good item, though. When he showers, he plugs the drain, and then he uses his like dirty shower water <laughs> to do his dishes. And he was like... You know, I, I just laugh at um, some of the things because they're they're always like, I don't understand why everyone doesn't do this. They they must just be lazy. And I'm like, people spend money on convenience all the time. Pretty sure the reason people don't do dishes in the water that they use to clean their shower is because they don't want to clean their dishes with their own dirt that they just washed. <laughs> oh man. But yeah, and then like you know. There's another one where, like, a family, they, uh... It's just, like, the, you realize that the recurring theme is that, like, some of the extreme cheapskates do it out of necessity. Some of them literally are just, like, just assholes to their neighbors to support this lifestyle. Like, they were selling their house, um, but the realtor was like, you will never sell this house because you've put off repairs on it for two decades so like it doesn't have the ability to um be sold because it's just like disgusting uh I, I don't know does this kill us instantly kind of all right didn't we have hp in our shop maybe whatever i mean if we die it's actually for the best <laughs> wait 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 get to the secret rooms um anyway so they, like, they, they hadn't done any repairs on their house. Their furniture was, like, lawn furniture that they scavenged from yard sales and stuff like that. Whatever. No big deal, okay? They went... But then they want to sell their house. But they, they're too cheap to buy furniture in order to stage. I can understand not wanting to pay money for furniture you're not actually going to use. Hey, guess what? You could take the furniture to your new house. But what they did instead is that they went to their uh, neighbor in this... What appeared to be a wealthy subdivision in Dallas, Texas and said, hey neighbor, uh, can we just steal your living room furniture for like a couple of days? And the neighbor was clearly like, body language wise was like, I don't want to do this, but the TLC like film crews in my face and I don't want to be seen as like a negative person. So sure. So uh, they moved all of their neighbors living room furniture into their house to stage it. And then after they did it, the people that went through the open house were like, no, I'm not going to buy that place. The, none of the toilets have handles. All the toilets have, like, wrenches next to them or, like, pairs of pliers that you're supposed to use on the lever of the toilet instead of handles. And, like, the carpet... Like, they had to replace their carpet, but they refused to pay for new carpet, so they just got a bunch of free samples and, like, filled it in, like, patchwork style that wasn't even, like, the same color carpet. And you're like... I mean, I just want to say, like, what do you think? Like, some of this stuff, you're like, I get it, you know? I, we don't eat out. We save a few hundred dollars a year. That's nice. That's that's smart. I admire that. But then there wouldn't be much of a show, because it would make people feel bad. They would be like, I, we should be doing that. But then, like, this family, they were like, our shower head broke, so our dad just took a two-liter soda bottle. Okay, time to die. Like tears in rain. 
Uh, he took a two liter soda bottle and poked holes in it and then screwed it into the the shower so that it makes like a custom shower head. And you're like, if you want to live like that, that's fine. But, you know, don't be mad when people are like, I don't want to buy this house. The showers don't even have shower heads. Like, what do you think's going to happen? You're not supposed to crush the can. It makes it it makes it harder to extract the the, the aluminum for recycling. Oh no, I crushed I crushed it I crushed it so much I made like a corner where some sparkling water is coming out of. Crusted. Alright, that's a slash marker. I'm sorry. Also please fix. <laughs> 